Hi, my name's Alan. I'm going to show you um, my ultra lightweight um, wild camping kit and backpack. Um, I've just used it on the Two Moors Way, uh, walking from Plymouth to Lynmouth in Devon, uh, 130 miles uh, in a week. And um, I thought it might be of interest to some of you just to see what kind of kit I used. Um, it's all personal choice, but I've made a bit of a study of the, the kind of stuff that's available that uh, I think would be good for people. Okay, so this pack without the uh, essentials of food and clothing and water um, comes in at just under seven kilos. That's including all the bags and bottles and stuff. Um, so um, that's not, not a bad weight um, to start with. Um, but I'll, I'll show you the bits that I, I actually carry. So first up, um, my little stool which I find is essential when you want to get your bottom off the ground um, and it's wet, say, and you just want to sit and have a cup of tea or even sit by your tent and do your cooking. It's not terribly high, but it works and it's, uh, it weighs under 300 grams. Very easy to use. Um, the pack itself you can't buy this one anymore. This one's actually about 40 years old um, and it's been in retirement for some time and it's been taken out of retirement. I took it out last year and used it for the South Downs way. But uh, it's Carry More, which used to be the brand to have. And um, it's got everything you need in it. It's, got, it's a framed rucksack, very comfortable with pockets, which you can't get these days. And um, it weighs 1.2 kilos. So let's have a look inside that bag. Dry bag with my food in. I carried enough with me on the Two Moors Way for, for three days of eating, um, and that weighs about 1.5 kilos. That's not included in the seven kilos of the bag. The dry bag is. This is my dry bag with clothes in. I usually have uh, mainly merino wool gear in there. Um, it's because it's antibacterial, it doesn't smell and it keeps you warm. Um, that weighs about two kilos. Brilliant stuff. This is extra stuff, extra weight, bags um, with maps in. I have an Ortlieb map bag which is very good. Keeps everything waterproof and easy to carry. Um, but it's hard getting the maps in and out because it's a kind of sticky plastic. Uh, a reading book, uh, a guide, and uh, I like doing a bit of sketching now and then. So all that comes to probably under a kilo. Next up, the uh, cooking kit. Titanium stuff. Little um, microfiber cloth, which is very useful um, for drying or washing stuff. Very lightweight little scrubber thing, getting any muck off. That's a 650ml titanium pot with a lid. Uh, very light. Inside is a 450ml titanium mug with a lid, so I can actually heat that up on my cooker. Uh, titanium wire fold knife, fork and spoon, very light. A can opener and bottle opener, very handy little camping tool. And that's my cooker, <laughs> tiny little thing, weighs 25 grams. There's various makes you can buy on um, eBay, but this one was uh, a BRS but you can get Lixarda and there's various brands. It might all be made by the same people, I don't know. Um, and it's tiny, it's got a little control. And I use um, one of these standard little striker things to go with it. And that just screws on top of your canister. And it's quite a good burner. Um, and because of the circular flame arrangement, I find it, it's 
it actually spreads quite well underneath the pot. It's a very good um, little burner and it's powerful, it gives it a lot of heat. It's amazing. Um, the gas canister, I use a C250, some people use C100. Um, I find a C250 easily lasts me a week. So, uh, and it's actually lighter than carrying two C100s. Overall it's about the same heavier weight, so I might as well carry that in the first place. That's my 450ml mug. Um, you don't necessarily need a mug as well. Most of the time I wasn't using this, I was just using that one pot, cooking up my porridge, uh, heating up water for my uh, meals, and um, I only used this if I wanted to make a cup of tea at the same time. Generally the, the, pot, the one pot would do all of it, 650ml. I have a little lightweight plate, it's still a bit mucky. Um, Sometimes it's just a, a bit of a luxury to have a plate that you can just sort of put some food on. Life Venture Trek Towel, Hydrofiber Ultralight. That is very light, that towel. It's the lightest one I've found, but it's also quite a big one. You can tie it around your waist, or I can anyway. Um, and so it's a very good towel. This is a windshield for the cooker. Titanium weighs 16 grams. It's almost essential, really. Trying to do some cooking in wind makes a lot of noise, but it's great if you if you're cooking in wind. It'll keep it keep your cooking working. Little magnetic catch. There you go. It sits around your cooker. Works fine in reality. Uh, I just have a, a few very small pegs. I found that quite handy if I've washed my gear and I want to peg it on the outside of my bag. You could just tie it on, but it doesn't dry so well. Um, or and I keep a string in there as well, which I can tie to a tree. So if I want to dry my stuff, I can peg it out on the line. And there's three pegs, so that's enough to, to put a whole kit of wear uh, on the line together. Right, this is possibly not the lightest you can get, but it's a solar charger. Um, it's uh, only about 6 watt, I think, the actual solar panels, but it has an incorporated battery. So I can charge it from the mains if I want to with my mains charger, and it's got a USB output. And in a day, uh, on an average day, that will take on um, enough charge to fully charge your mobile phone. So if you just, if it's not raining all the time, you can put it on the top of your pack, tie it on, and it will just give you the, the charge that you need. And, and I can, if, if it's not just completely raining miserable every day, then I can keep sufficient with that. Otherwise, I'll top up in a pub or something. My um, toiletry kit. I keep a little tiny sewing kit like you get in hotels. It's quite handy if you do tear anything. Uh, tooth, tiny toothbrush, toothpaste, lip salve, wash that's um, uh, universal wash. Uh, you can even use it in salt water and it's biodegradable, it's good stuff. Um, and the deodorant, of course. And that's my little wash bag. Oh, and I've got a tiny little mirror in there, which I think came in a Christmas cracker or something, but it's handy. And my first aid bag. If you get the commercial first aid bags, they've got stuff you don't necessarily want and they're rather heavy. Uh, here I've got standard bandage, triangular bandage, um, and uh, plasters, paracetamol, ibuprofen, Rennies. Um, and also I've got a um, tick removing tool, which is very handy if you're camping in long grass. Who knows, you'd like to get one. Just one more thing about the uh, cooking and eating. <coughs> this time I took this. Just one of those silicon spoons you can buy, quite cheap. Um, but when you're trying to cook food camping, as you probably know, stuff easily get burnt on the sides of your pot or whatever and I make porridge in the mornings and I like cooking up my porridge, quinoa porridge I make and this thing, because it's squidgy 
scrapes every single item out of that pot without making a horrible scrapey sound like titanium or titanium. Um, and so by the time I've finished, that pot is virtually clean and a little swish with water, done. Works very, very well. I can't overstress how useful just one of these little microfiber cloths is. Um, you can use it for washing and drying. You can use and it squeezes out every bit of moisture virtually. Um, and you can just tie it on your bag anyway and let it dry. Um, it's great if you need to do a wash um, in the stream or something like that. Um, and if your tent gets wet or something, you can use it for mopping that up. That little thing is so useful during the week. So on to the pockets. These are quite nice size pockets in this and I use one for water and I can get uh, two litres in this pocket and this is what I carry. Two one litre bottles. Um, the platypus ones are probably the better. This was just a cheaper Highlander one that I got which is fine. Neither of them have taste to them. They're, they're really good little bottles um, and they're one litre each. Added to that, you see here I have a guy that happens to carry a 0.8 litre smart water bottle, um, which I just top up. Um, obviously, a litre of water weighs a kilo. Um, I would generally, if I'm going somewhere, make sure I've got a litre with me um, and my drinking bottle. Um, and if I knew I wasn't going to be getting anywhere near water for an extra day, I'd make sure I've got my extra litre. That generally would be enough to keep me going for two days. If I really needed it, I would um, use this. And I did use this a few times in streams mainly and that. And this is um, a Sawyer water filter. Very, very lightweight. Nothing to it really. Um, and you just fill that bottle with water from the stream or river. Uh, screw that on and squirt that out into your bottle. Um, very, very useful thing to have um, and it made me feel secure um, knowing that I could actually get water if I needed it. And I just keep that in a mesh bag. It usually comes with a syringe for back flushing uh, but you don't, if you're just on a short trip for a week or something like that, you don't really need the back flush so I, I don't carry it with me pocket. Right, a load of other useful bits. Right, this is from the other pocket here. Um, my toiletry kit. One of these coffin spades. They're a bit big. I actually ground the tip off because it was just too long. It's in the pocket better that way. But it's very light um, so and strong and it does the job if you want to dig a little hole to, to use. Um, some hand spray, just some sanitizer for washing your hands afterwards and uh, toilet paper, I just get some toilet paper off a toilet roll in a public toilet or somewhere and wrap it round uh, a wooden stirrer and, and that does the job, it's brilliant. Um, so that's that. My reading glasses I just keep, I've got very focals, I just keep them in a little microfiber bag. Another microfiber bag for my charging kit that goes with the solar charger. So in there I have a folding two-way mains charger for if I'm going in a pub. Two USB outputs. Brilliant. And the leads that I need are uh, uh, just a micro USB, uh, a, mic a USB-C which is the new one, universal one and uh, the lead which is used for charging the actual solar charger that I've got and that's just kept in the microfiber bag light again. Quite a handy thing, an after bite pen if you get bitten, which you probably will. On the same note, mozzie repellent and meaty repellent. Okay. Uh, a bit of elastic for tying things on, that's quite useful sometimes. Sun cream, another essential, small pack. Uh, 
compass and whistle. Um, this one actually went kaput halfway through the week. I've never known a compass go kaput, but it points every which way it wants to now. Uh, maybe I put it near the phone or the something and it neutralised it, I don't know. So I had to buy another one. Yeah, it's useful. Safety is item. Um, this is my shaver. Um, it's a, a mini USB recharge. All the mini USB leads in there as well somewhere. Oh, there it is. Um, and uh, it's just a handy little charger. You just charge it up. One charge actually lasts, it's a, lasts the whole week for me shaving. It doesn't get the long hairs off, it'll just get the little ones off, but it keeps the worst at bay. But that weighs probably about, no, it's about 100 grams. So uh, it's up to you whether you want to carry something like that, it's a little luxury. Headphones, I just keep them in a little bag uh, to go with my, um, my phone and uh, I can listen to music when I want to as well, which is good. What else is in here? Ah, the other essential. This is a rechargeable uh, light, which has got red light, um, as well as um, the white light, which is very powerful, uh, but three settings, so obviously you need a light. That's all I use. And another item, which is, a, a, again, possibly a bit of a luxury, it's just a little fold away nylon bag. If you've pitched a tent and you want to walk into town and take your books and stuff with you, then uh, it's handy to have something to carry it in. But you know, for 30 grams, it's uh, possibly worth having. Okay, the um, pocket on the top of the bag is where I like to keep my waterproofs. So I can easily get to them if it rains, just pop the bag down and grab them out. This is um, a Berg house. Pack like two. Um, it's just a shell jacket. Um, if you have lining and it gets wet, it never dries out. Um, so uh, I just get the, the, the shell jacket, and this is Gore-Tex. Uh, very waterproof, very breathable. I found it great for walking in as well as you know, when it's raining. So it's, uh, if it's cold, you can just slip it on over the top. These are my um, Berg House. I can't remember the actual model name of them, it might say on there, but they're Gore-Tex and they're zipped all the way down the leg uh, over trousers. Um, yeah. Can't find the actual brand, but it's, uh, I mean it's a Berghaus pair of trousers, you can see they've got a bit used, and they're Gore-Tex, but they're very light, so I think they're a pack, might be packed light brand again. Um, what else is in there? A pair of short gaiters, um, some people prefer long gaiters and if it was very long grass and it was very wet it would be useful to have long gaiters or even you wear your over trousers. So I keep that over trousers for if it's long grass and rain um, and I keep the short gaiters just for walking through uh, shorter wet grass um, or where there's lots of seeds that are going to get down inside your boots and make them uncomfortable. And last of all, in then but not least, is just a little uh, rucksack cover. They vary a lot in, in weight and thickness. This is a very lightweight one, um, and it's a very cheap one, it's only about six quid I think, online. Um, but it does the job, I had a, one day of quite a good soaking, um, and uh, this kept my pack dry. It's not a very waterproof pack, this old one. Okay, last but not least, the bottom compartment. get the air to your feet after a day of walking um, so I, I keep these little foam shoes they weigh just over 200 grams they do the job um, and they've, they've got proper um, sort of straps all round so they're not like flip-flops that keep coming off this is my Thermarest um, it's the Neolite Air um, it's a comfortable mat quite thick um, it's quite expensive, over 100 quid, uh, and very light, it's only just over 300 grams. Uh, but it's a little bit on the narrow side, um, and it's made of quite slidey material, so it slides around a bit in the tent and underneath you. Um, and it takes over 30 breaths to inflate. 
Uh, last time when I did the South Downs Ray, I, I had a slightly heavier one, 400 grams, cheaper one, which is a cloud base that Alpkit make, uh, and that only takes about 17 breaths to uh, inflate, um, and it doesn't slide about. But it's not quite as comfortable in other respects as this one. Packed in here as well is my little Nature Hike uh, pillow, inflatable, which is, to me, is a really essential uh, comfort item. Weighs nothing really. Five breaths and it's up. And that's what it's like inflated. Very comfortable, nice velvety finish. Keeps your head in the right position. Sleeping bag. Um, I always keep my sleeping bag in the uh, you know, dry bag just in case other kit's wet. It's the uh, Mountain Equipment Helium Solo. Uh, it weighs just over 400 grams, 440 grams I think it was. Um, and it's uh, goose down, very light. Um, the jury's out on this one. It's, it wasn't the warmest, um, even though this is June and I used it in June. Uh, it was a bit chilly in the, at nights. And I was using it with a silk liner too. But I also found that it was a, something about the breathability wasn't quite right. Between the two of these, it, uh, I felt a bit sweaty in the, in the bag. This is my tent footprint. It's uh, a, a material that looks like paper. It's actually made out of uh, a, a compressed plastic fibre. Um, and it's called Tyvek very tough, you can't tear it, um, and it's thorn resistant, so it's not thorn proof, but it's thorn resistant, and for such a thin light material, this footprint weighs about, I think, 110 grams for my tent, um, and it's, it's a bit like using paper, it doesn't soak up the water, it's waterproof virtually, it's used as a building material, and you can buy it on eBay, it's quite cheap but very, very effective, and you can just cut it with scissors to the shape of your tent. And it just folds up, as you can see, like a, a, a big paper sheet. Very, very good. And before I've used um, ordinary tarp material, that is not thorn resistant. It doesn't give you any protection other than a bit of water resistance. Um, and I've actually had punctures in my, um, my sleeping mats before because of that. Finally, the tent. Uh, more on my tent after, but uh, very small, very lightweight. I love my little tent, it's brilliant. Um, so easy to use. Nordisk Telemark. Obviously I carry my sunnies with me. Very essential. My walking boots. These are Salomon's, uh, what's the model? Prism? I think it's a P, I can't think. But they're very light, uh, they weigh about 690 grams, much lighter than my scarpers I had before. And scarpers are good boots, but these were much more comfortable I found for walking. The scarpers are a bit hard inside. These fitted beautifully, they got a good shape, they roll well, they gripped well, it's brilliant rubber, and they were waterproof. Um, I just really enjoyed wearing these boots, very comfortable, very breathable too. All of that all together, um, when it's loaded up, with water and food for three days, three full days, uh, comes to 14 kilos. So it's pretty light, I think. Um, that's including my camera bag, of course. Camera um, in that 14 kilos is included, and that's my 400 gram. So this is the tent when it's pitched. Um, it's a Nordisk Telemark one, and as it says on the pack. 830 grams. I've got it with the storm kit which gives you extra guy lines and uh, it comes up at about 900 grams altogether. So there's plenty of room inside for one. A little vestibule to put your gear in. Plenty of room inside for one person. And just about enough height if you want to sit inside. Um, it does get a bit of condensation, I found, uh, 
inside, but then I don't know a tent which doesn't get condensation inside. But I've been in this in uh, some quite heavy steroid rain and it's uh, kept me completely dry. Brilliant tent, very, very pleased with it. Easy to put up, easy to take down, packs always easily into its valise, which is getting as unusual. Okay, that's it. I hope that's been useful. Cheers.